In Luke 17, we'll begin our reading, verse 22. The Bible says, And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they, say, and they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under the heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. So they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. Uh, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, uh, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure to bless your holy name. Lord, you've been so good to us this weekend. Lord, your presence has been so real and so wonderful. And Father, we are certainly grateful and thankful. And Lord, we feel guilty to even ask that once again, Lord, you'd show up in a great and mighty way. But Lord, you said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You said to boldly come to the throne of grace uh, to find help in time of need. Father, we need your help, and God, without you, we can do nothing. And Father, we're longing for uh, you to show out in a way that we have never seen. Uh, Lord, we are longing to see the power of God fall, and longing to see uh, Holy Ghost conviction in these days, uh, like it's been in days gone by that we've only read about. Uh, and God, we long to see a move amongst thy people. Uh, we long to see a harvest of souls come to Christ, uh, and we long to see Jesus. Jesus, highly glorified and lifted up. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd help us these next few minutes. Use this unworthy vessel. Speak to our hearts. Lord, thank you for the good singing, the good choir singing by those kids that touched my heart. God, thank you for the good special singing. God, help us to lay our Isaacs and our idols down. And God, help us, Lord, uh, to meet with God. Bless now, use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <coughs> I'm going to draw your attention to three simple things as an introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the sureness of the Lord's return. And the Bible says in verse number 24, For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth in the other part under heaven, so shall also... Uh, the Son of Man be in His day. Make no mistake, uh, Jesus is coming. He said uh, to His disciples in John chapter number 14, He says, Let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. Uh, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again uh, and receive you unto myself. Uh, when he ascended up into heaven, the angels standing by uh, looked to his disciples 
said, Why stand ye here gazing? Uh, uh, this same Jesus that went up uh, uh, will come again. Uh, uh, Paul said, uh, I don't want you to be ignorant of this thing, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Uh, he said, One day uh, uh, Jesus is going to step out of the cloud with a shout of the archangel, uh, and Christ is going to bring the dead with him. Uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first, uh, and we which are alive shall be caught up uh, with the Lord, and we shall remain with the Lord, and so shall be. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Uh, there is the sureness of His coming. He's coming. You say, I've heard that all my life. It don't change the fact. He's coming. Right. Can I say, when he comes, Brother Phil, I'm a going. Hallelujah. Hey, I've been blood bought, blood washed. Uh, I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, hey, that trumpet blows. I'm out of here. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's a coming. And he could come today. Yeah. Uh, oh, I long for him to come. And he would not upset me if we finish this service in heaven. Amen. Amen. He's a coming. You get that down. He's a coming. Do you understand? He's coming. Huh? I remember uh, 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 when I, I, I was young. I, I was young one time. Huh? I remember being in trouble a time or two. I was in trouble a time. Miss Lynn, don't say amen right there, huh? She's my aunt. Huh? Uh, uh, I did get in trouble a time too. Huh? Uh, and I can remember a few times uh, Mama saying, when your daddy gets home, he's going to deal with you. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I could have wished for my daddy not to come and deal with me. Uh, I could wish for my mama to forget about it. Uh, I could, but one thing was sure, uh, when daddy came uh, and she told him uh, I had to deal with daddy. Uh, uh, friend, you can wish that he's not coming today. You can hope he's not coming today. Uh, you can think he's not coming today. Uh, but friend, he is coming uh, and he could come today. Uh, you better be ready to meet him. We find the sureness of his coming. Can I say in this passage we find the sign of his coming. He said as it was in the days of Noah and he said as it was in the days of Lot. We see the sign of the Lord's return. He said in Noah's day, uh, uh, in verse 27, they did eat and drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. What he is referring to, uh, in Noah's day, they did what was evil continually in their hearts. Uh, 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 in Noah's day, uh, they lived to party and party to live. Uh, in Noah's day, there was nothing considered holy. Uh, uh, in Noah's day, uh, uh, the sanctity of marriage didn't mind. Uh, they swapped wives off like it was nothing. Uh, in in Noah's day, uh, there was nothing uh, uh, that was ever considered in their hearts. It was they was going to have to answer to God. In Lot's day, it was very similar. In Sodom and Gomorrah, everything reigned except the Lord. And can I say, in America today, everything goes on except what's holy and right before God. America is no longer a Christian nation. In the 60s, they kicked God out of schools, but I got news for you. He's been out of people's hearts long before then. It's been over 100 years since there's been true revival in America. Yet we got more preaching. We got more avenues. Uh, uh, men of God know more about the Bible than they knew back those days. Uh, we got more talent. Uh, we got better buildings. We got more opportunities. Uh, but we got less God. We see the sureness of the Lord's return. We see the signs of the Lord's return. But I want you to notice the sadness at the Lord's return. Look at verse 29 again. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Those that partied, those that had a big time, those that thought that uh, uh, they were bigger than uh, God, those that said, uh, 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 I'll just party with my friends in hell, those that thought they had a hand on everything when Jesus reigned judgment. Amen. Amen. Their hearts grieved, and I got news for you, they're in hell still grieving. Well, that's right. That's right, Can I say, I'm interested in verse 28. The Bible says, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. 
Can I say you could take out the words days of Lot and say our days. And you would find exactly what is going on on every street in every town of America. People eat, they drink, they buy, they sell, they plant, and they build. Can I say in the days of Lot they were bountiful. They were prosperous. They ate, they drank, they planted, they built. You don't build if you're not prosperous. Can I say when we went through that little hiccup of a recession a, a, a few years ago, the concrete trucks quit running up and down Pleasant Valley Road. Well, we was in the old building, and I was in my office over there, and they was building about uh, uh, 500 to 750 houses a year right around here. That's all I heard all day long were concrete trucks going. Why? Because they was building houses. There was a boom. But when the recession hit, uh, uh, friends, the concrete trucks stopped. Would have been a bad day for you, Brother jo uh, Jake. Jake from State Farm, uh, there wouldn't been much concrete running those days. You know how I know America's doing pretty good right now? The concrete trucks are running again. They're putting in a new road. They're doing this. They're doing that. There's building everywhere. Everywhere you go, you see help wanted signs. They can't get employees. Uh, and the ones again aren't worth a flip. Everybody says nobody wants to work nowadays. Uh, I, I'm just telling you, uh, uh, I see a lot of similarities uh, in Lot's day. But can I say in Lot's day, uh, 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 they were busy. Uh, and can I say nobody's got enough time today. Uh, everybody's busy. Everybody's running. Uh, everybody's got that phone out and they're running in their life by that phone. Uh, uh, we got to be here, there, watch this app, do this thing, do this. Uh, everybody's got uh, uh, time for everything but sleep in God, huh? Amen. They were busy. Can I say something else? They were bountiful, they were busy, but they were barren. Everything that you see right there says a prosperous crowd. Matter of fact, when Lot looked uh, down and Abraham gave him the choice, uh, you could have uh, uh, the well, well uh, plains uh, or you could have down there in that city. He said, boy, that looks like a real good place to run, raise a family. Yeah. And he chose Sodom and Gomorrah, pitched his tent toward there because everything looked great. The problem is he didn't see the backside of the billboard. They were barren spiritually. Can I say, when you look at America, and thank God, uh, America is starting to be great again. Amen. So I don't agree with all that stuff. I don't care. I'm glad America's great again. Uh, I just wish that people would truly salute the flag and realize what it costs for us to have that flag. I wish we'd have some patriotism in our country again. I wish people would really be for our country and be for uh, our folks. Uh, hey, listen, if America did right, we wouldn't have a homeless problem in America. If America did right, we wouldn't have uh, uh, all the opioid problems and all those kind of things. Uh, if America did right, America would get right with God and start doing the things the way God does things, and America would straighten out. Uh, say, how do you know that? Go read the real history of how America started. She was a whole different than what she is today. You realize up till 1890, you couldn't even testify in a court of law if you didn't believe in God. Hmm? You're welcome. I'm just trying to help you. They were barren. So I want to preach for a little bit on this thought. I want to preach on living in the days of Lot. Living in the days of Lot. Can I say in the days of Lot there was no righteousness? In Galatians chapter 18, verse number 20, the Bible says, And the Lord said, uh, Because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Uh, in verse 24 of that chapter, he said, Peradventure, this is Abraham uh, communing with God and interceding on behalf of Lot, his family. Uh, and he's telling God, uh, If you find righteous people, will you not destroy the cities? In verse 24, he said, Peradventure, if there be 50 righteous within the city, uh, will thou also destroy and stay? spare not the place for the 50 righteous that are therein. God said, I'll spare it for 50. Yeah. Abraham keeps interceding, keeps interceding, keeps interceding. Verse 32, he said, and he said, uh, oh, let not the Lord be angry, uh, and I will speak yet, but this once peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, the Lord speaking, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Uh, I want to tell you, as wicked as it was, uh, God wouldn't have destroyed it if there had been ten righteous people uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Uh, uh, can I tell you why God hasn't judged America for some of the choices our government has made, uh, for some of the choices that are going on in our streets? Because uh, God still sees some righteous folks. Uh, he still sees the Bible being printed and preached. Uh, he still sees missionaries being sent out. Uh, he still sees there is some hope. Hallelujah. But make no mistake, God's not mark, mocked whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. And America's going to be judged by God someday. But can I say, in the days and the lives of Lot, there was no righteousness. You study that out. Why did Abraham stop at 10? God didn't stop. Abraham stopped interceding when he got to 10 righteous people, Brother Brian, because if you go and you study out that chapter 18, you'll find out in Lot's life, counting him and Mrs. Lot and their children and their, their sons-in-laws, there was 10 of them. Abraham thought, surely Lot has won his family. Can I say, sometimes your family is the hardest people to win. Hmm. Can I say, in the days of Lot there was no righteousness in our day there's not much righteousness anymore can I say in our Baptist churches there aren't much righteousness anymore Amen. you start preaching on living right people get mad can I say it's always right to do right, right. and doing right is being living the Bible way you never go wrong doing what God said Amen. can I say in the days of Lot there was no repentance Nowhere in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah do you find anybody repent towards God. Amen. Can I say in our day and age there's not much repentance. It's not even preached on anymore. A lot of preachers today they just tell you make a decision. You just decide to trust Christ. If you want to be, uh, what about these churches where uh, uh, they got a big crowd and they just say raise your hand if you want to trust the Lord. That's not getting saved. Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, I don't care what some doctor preacher says. I want to do what Jesus said. And Jesus said, you must repent. Uh, uh, can I say repentance is a change of mind and change of heart. Uh, repentance is where you're going this way uh, and you turn to the Lord uh, and you go His way. Uh, uh, listen friend, uh, uh, you made a decision what you're going to wear to church today. That won't take you to heaven. Uh, decisionisms won't take you to heaven. Saying yes won't take you to heaven. Uh, what will take you to heaven uh, is believing and putting your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and repenting of of your sins and telling him you're sorry. First, or Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Jesus. If you study the Bible, nobody ever came to Jesus and left the same way. And can I say, when somebody truly gets born again, they don't leave the same way. Because hmm? listen. You were dead in trespasses and sin. When, when Jesus saves you, He seals you. The Holy Ghost moves inside of you, and you're different because God lives in you. If, uh, if you wasn't any different after your profession than you was before your profession, that's all you got. Uh, who wants a profession when you can have possession? When the Holy Ghost moves in. And I say, well, you don't see much repentance. Can I say, you don't see much repentance out of believers? Well, I like what you're taught on, Brother Jeffrey. Mm. Boy, we, we get so full of junk. Yes, sir. Bitterness and anger and hatred. And we come to church, put on them little smiles. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. But inside, there's an inferno going on. The preacher preaches, and all you do is get mad. Listen, I've been in this thing 45 years. I haven't always been where I should be with God. Amen. There's never been a time a preacher didn't peel my hide off preaching the word of God that I didn't try and get right with God and then go hug his neck and thank him. Amen. Thank God for a man of God to tell me the truth. Uh, I want to tell you, my problem isn't you. My problem isn't somebody down the street. My problem is the guy I look in the mirror at every day. Amen. And sometimes that guy gets in the way. And thanks be unto God when a preacher lets me know, hey, you need to get that guy out of the way. Hmm? Lots of days there wasn't repentance. You don't see many people repent. You'll see folks go to the altar and then they go right back to whatever they supposedly left at the altar. That's not repentance. That's remorse. 
Repentance is turning from it and saying, by the grace of God, I'm not going back there. Right. Mm. Well, that went over real good. Can I say in Lot's day, there was no response. Yeah. Amen. They didn't respond to the fact that God was going to destroy the cities. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't any response. I just preached as hard as I could a few minutes ago on the fact Jesus is coming and some of you did, didn't phase you. I might as well have got up here and told a Star Wars story. Probably got more out of you. Uh, that, that one day streamed on that Disney Plus channel about the Mandalorian or whatever and had the little baby Yoda. Everybody loves little baby Yoda. They love him more than baby Jesus. You can get up and preach uh, John 3.16 and people get bored. I had got over the fact that God, so for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Him kids up there singing, I'm not going to hell. Something was going on in my soul. Because I'm not going to hell. Because Jesus came my way, convicted me of my sins. Hey, I had enough sins to repent and trust Him. And He changed my life. I'm heaven bound because of the grace of God. Praise the Lord. You preach on Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and people yawn. There's no response. It ought to tear us up. We are not even walking this building without, without getting down and thanking God we had the privilege to come in this building and worship Him. We ought to be in hell with our back broke today. Hey, He'd be justified throwing us off into hell for things we've thought and said and done since we got saved. Oh, to bless his holy name. Lot's day, there wasn't any response. Can I say this? In Lot's day, there wasn't any respect. In Genesis 19, 14, the Bible says, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocketh unto his son-in-laws. There wasn't any respect. I want to tell you something. If you announce something bad's going to happen, there's a certain element of people they'll 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 mock, they'll mock you. Right. They'll laugh at you. They have been saying all of my lifetime that San Andreas fault out there, one of these days that quake's going to hit and all California's going to end up in a river and people still go there. I got something worse for you than that. Nancy Pelosi's in office and people move there. I'd run from her. Man, that woman's lost her mind. We don't have much better with McConnell and Rand Paul, but at least they believe the Constitution. Uh, I got news for you. None of them politicians worth the flip. It's all about the lobbyist. Uh, well, I want to tell you something. You can tell people there's going to be an earthquake. They don't care. You can tell people there's a great storm of brewing in the Gulf. It's going to wipe out Louisiana, them, them Cajuns. They don't care. How many times we got to build New Orleans? Uh, Amen. Well, people don't care. But I got some worse. Jesus is coming. If you're not saved, you're going to die and go to hell. And people don't care. They think they're going to live forever. Well, you're right. You're going to live forever. In one of two places, heaven or hell. And what you do with the blood of Jesus Christ determines that. But can I say? There was no respect. They didn't care what Lot had to say. There was no respect. Now, I'll tell you why they didn't respect Lot. They didn't respect him because he had no testimony for God. Matter of fact, he became very important in Sodom. He was the keeper of the gate. That's where all the business was done. He had, in our day and times, the position of an executive judge. He was more interested in the uh, nobility of man than being right with God. And when he had a message from God, they all laughed at him. Because his testimony didn't back up what he was saying. You know, that's why some of you can't get family to come to church with you. They've watched you. 
Where's the response now? Hmm? You know why I was so proud of these kids? Man, they were excited to be here. Like, every one of them was inviting folks to come. And some of them, their friends came. Some of them, their friends didn't come. But they was inviting them. They was excited. Amen. When was the last time you invited somebody to church? Right. Amen. Hmm? Can I help you something? A lot of you don't invite folks to church because you don't have a testimony before them. Amen. Can I say something else about Lot? He had no touch of God. You know when people respect you? They may not agree with you. You know when they'll respect you? When they see God on you. Amen. They may be, as Brother Jeffrey preached, they may hate your guts because you got so much God on you, they can't stand to be around you. Yeah. But they'll still respect you. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Can I say? Lot had no trustworthiness from God. God didn't trust Lot to win that city. That's why God destroyed it. You know why some of you never do anything for God? God can't trust you with it. Hmm? Listen, people misquote that verse all the time, that money's the root of all evil. That's not what the book says. The book says the love money's the root of all evil. You know why God doesn't give a lot of people a lot of money? Because they would love money more than they love God. God gives money to people he can trust with it. That they're going to use it for his glory. I just thought I'd throw that in. It's not in my notes. That didn't cost you anything. I just want to tell you something. There was no respect for Lot. And so he's telling them, you need to get out of here. God's going to destroy this. There wasn't no respect in that. Can I say there's no response and respect in the house of God anymore? Man, if God can preach to his lungs or leather and there's no respect for him because you don't fear God. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Can I say there's no response because you really don't think it's going to happen? Well, friend, I, I, I really, I, I don't care if you think it's not going to happen or not. It's going to happen. One of these days, Jesus is coming. And one of these days, you're going to stand before God. You're going to give an account, not of me, but of yourself. I preach along these lines because I want to see you right with God. I want to see your family right with God. I want to see you have the blessings of God on your life. But you'll never have it living like Lot did in the days of Lot. Let me say this. In the days of Lot, there was no revival. Now, can I say revival is a movement from God? You can't work it up. You can't pay for it. You can't do anything to get God. God does it when he looks and sees that you are deemed worthy to have it. Uh, revival don't come through a preacher. I can prove that by taking you over and show you Jonah. Jonah was backslidden. God used him to bring a revival to Nineveh. Right. Greatest revival recorded in the Bible. The king got right. Everybody in the king's court got right. Everybody in the, in the city of Nineveh got right. It was a pretty good city. It took three days to walk all the way around it. It was such a great revival, even the beast had to fast for it, and they had revival. The cows and whatever else they had back then. You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying God sent revival to Nineveh not based on what the preacher did. The preacher was mad God revived them. The preacher wanted to see them all get destroyed. That's a bad preacher, isn't it? That's a sorry preacher. I know some of them preachers. Uh, they're Pharisaical Baptists. They don't want to see God move. If they would, they'd preach the book. There was no revival. You know why we don't see revival? Because we're too interested in what happens out there. Then we're interested in what happens in here, the book. When we want God more than we want anything else, we'll have revival. See, revival's not about what he can give you from his hand. Revival's about wanting him. Moses saw the glory of God because Moses sought God. We'll see the glory when we start seeking God. Listen, I was reading this and seeing all this and thinking about the days a lot and looking around in our lives in this country. We're starting a new year. Isn't it about time we get serious about doing something for God? 
But we saw that video from St. Lucia, all them kids' lives being touched and changed. Shouldn't that motivate you to do something for God? I mean, I appreciate that you brought gifts and I appreciate some gave money, but shouldn't you really want to do something for God? Hmm? Quit tipping God and lay your Isaacs down. What's it going to take for the busyness of the world and all the bounty of the world and all that to take second place in your life? Unfortunately, Brother Mike, too many times what it takes is a tragedy. Amen. Before people get serious about it. Why don't we quit worrying about a tragedy and quit thinking about why don't we just get right with God? Amen. Instead of a tragedy on the way, we might have a blessing on the way. Yeah. Right. Hmm? And why don't we quit playing with God and we just go all in? Hmm? Because at the same time, Lot's life was going on and all that that terrible story that happened in Genesis 18 and 19 happened. There was a man named Abraham. And Abraham was known as the friend of God. Yeah. And so why we're living like the days of Lot. There could be some Abrahams. Amen. Some folks that are the friend of God. Some folks that can commune with God. Some folks that can walk with God. Some folks that can have the blessings of God. Some folks that can get a promise from God. Some folks, their lives can count for God. Amen. So why don't we choose to be Abraham and not Lot? I would to God. God would help us to hunger for Him. Long for Him to move. Long to see God's touch in our own lives and in our church's lives. Long to see when we come in here, people's lives change. That people don't leave the same condition they came in. Long to see sinners get truly born again. And long to see the saints of God revive. Yep. You know, we haven't changed. We've been doing this for years. You know, we do meet a half hour for each service to pray for the service. Yep. But you know, there's very few that come out for that. Can I help you something? That extra half hour sleep that you fight for? Get a whole lot more benefit if you'd be in the house of God praying for God to move. Say, I need my sleep. Tell me about it. I got about four hours last night. Why don't you invest in some of these kids' lives by taking one on and praying for them every day? Why don't you take a handful of them tracks and go out and just give them to folks? Say, here, the Lord loves you. Just walk off. You never know what God's going to do. Why don't you get y'all and say, God, what can I do to be known as the friend of God? Hmm? When's the last time you prayed for the Holy Ghost to convict sinners? When's the last time you prayed for the power of God to fall into service? When's the last time you prayed for something that wasn't about you? God help us to not live like Lot did but to choose to live like Abraham did. I wonder today, are you tired of seeing life just propelling on and not much from God? Boy, I am. I sure would like to see a movement of God. Amen. And let me just qualify by saying some of the greatest people I know on the face of the earth is in this building today. There's folks in here that love God, live for God, serve God, but we all got room for more God in our life. And I've said all the time, I long for something unusual because the usual isn't working. Right. Something unusual has to come from God because we got all the programs down. Amen. I sure wish God would just tear us up. Amen. Yeah. And we would truly see Him for who Amen. He is. If you realize that a thrice holy God who took nothing and made everything, looked ahead in time and saw you in your sinful state and he loved you anyway? Yeah. Yeah. That ought to tear you up. Amen. Amen. 
God's seen all of our faults and failures and weaknesses and he who has no weaknesses or faults or failures says, I love you. Amen. That'll tear you up. That while he was bleeding after he'd been beaten and he's dying on in his mind he's thinking about the joy that was set before him. Sure. That one day those arms that were hanging on a cross could wrap around you Amen. and embrace you and let you know he did it for you. Amen. And I'll tear you up Amen. that God would love you and love me that much. Boy, I don't want to be like a lot. Amen. I want to be like an Abraham. Yeah. I want to be a friend of yeah. God. Sure. Because he's been a friend to me. Amen. Is he your friend today? Do you love him today? Do you love him enough to quit being comfortable and let him truly use your life? Or them kids? Or they're worth something. If we don't set a proper example, what kind of church are they going to have? Are you willing to fall in love with God again? Because that's what it's going to take to change us. Yes, sir. Is fall in love with Him again. Let's all stand, Brother Ray. You come. I'll say this without arrogance. If you don't respond and have no respect for the fact that Jesus is coming, you're no better than those that lived in Sodom. With a movement from you. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. How much do you want to see God move in your life and in your family's life? There ought to be something in you that compels you to want to get closer to Jesus. We're going to have a song of invitation. We're going to invite you just to just come. Seek the Lord. Ask Him how you can be a friend to Him. If you're here today and you're not saved, if you'll come, we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can get gloriously saved today. The Lord's here. He loves you. And he wants to save you. But friend, He's a gentleman. He'll not force Himself on you. He invites you to come. And if you're willing to step out and come to Him, friend, He said if you'll come to Him, He'll in no wise cast you out. But friend, you've got to come to Him. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank You for these that are in the altar. You know what is needed today. God, help them. Meet, meet the needs of their lives. And Lord, help us to leave here not barren in our soul. God, help us to love You like You love us. Help us to desire to be a friend of God. God, I pray for Holy Ghost conviction now in this invitation. I pray for anybody's unsaved that, Lord, today you'd roll back the veil from their eyes and show them what is their, their future if they don't trust Christ. God, I pray you'd uh, enhance that measure of faith that you give to every man so they'll step out and trust Christ. God, have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.